Welcome back to the most amazing top 10. Here are the top 10 unsettling things that scientists don't want you to see. And now you're gonna see them all, thanks to me. Let's dive in. Kicking off the list at number 10, the discovery of penicillin. Sometimes miracles happen when nobody is looking. That's the key. Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin back in 1928. At the time, he was actually studying Staphylococcus, which is a bacteria that causes infections and boils and all that nasty stuff. But right before Alexander left for a two week vacation, he left a petri dish with some of that Staphylococcus behind. He left it on the lab table rather than store it away in an incubator. Now during his well needed time off, a penicillium mold spore just drifted in there magically, either through the window, up the lab stairwell, some Horton here's a who type commute, and the temperature of the room and lack of one Alexander Fleming allowed for the mold to fight back. Furthermore, preventing that bacteria from growing Growing. He literally changed the world. He discovered this antibacterial substance and it was only produced by the strains of penicillium. Thank you, because or else we'd be a little uncomfortable. Number nine, mass extinction. Are we part of the sixth extinction? Is it happening right now all around us? Most likely. We lose thousands of species each year, and when looking in the past, asteroids and ice ages, sure, they have all something to do with massive extinction level events, of course, but after humans invented the wheel and then discovered fire, things started to change. We kind of caused a lot of bad stuff. In the 1800s, industrialization drove up extinction rates and continues to do so. According to Elizabeth Colbert, across the world, scientists every day are monitoring what could be the largest extinction event since the dinosaurs. That's us, since the dinosaurs. It's like dinosaurs, T-Rex, and then us. Equally as bad. What do you know? Arms are a bit longer now, a bit longer, but still, we're up to no good. The way human beings interact with the environment and affect biodiversity could be more deadly than an asteroid hitting the Earth. That's pretty eye-opening. With an ever-climbing list of endangered species, Colbert and the world asks one question. Is it too late to change it? Like, are we screwed? Most likely. But we can do our best at this point. Okay, let's move on to something a bit lighter so we don't feel like complete trash. Sounds good, let's do it. Number eight, monkey business. Okay, this study done back in 2016, I had to include it because in a list of unsettling things, this definitely fits. This is the most unsettling thing I've ever heard in my life. And yeah, that includes finding out you're part of a mass extinction level event. This one's right beside it. You ever see Planet of the Apes? The voice acting, the motion capture, Andy Serkis, he kills it. All those dots on his face, really good. The voice, oh, nails it. It's like Caesar, it's very deep. I can't even do it. If I did, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be doing Planet of the Ape movies. Well, it turns out in real life, they would sound even scarier than that. Research done back in 2016 showed that macaques have a vocal tract capable of speaking. The lucky thing is they just don't have the brain power to do so, or else they would sound like this. Will you marry me? Didn't hear it? Let's hear it again. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? That's the scariest thing. Imagine a macaque saying that to you. I would politely say, no thank you. I'd be like, no, I'm good, man, thanks. Also, your voice is so deep. Is that laryngitis? What's that? Some vitamins. I was doing fine before I heard this, so I had to bring you down with me. You're welcome. Hit that thumbs up. And also, will you marry me? Number seven, human sacrifice. Archaeology is fascinating, but the digger we deep into the earth, the more we find out about our past. Most of the time, that's not so fun. Our past is pretty shady. Usually these findings are horrible. Not too long ago, we found the remains of a 3,000 year old skeleton in Greece. They found the skeleton on the side of Mount Lycaon, which historians know as the site of animal sacrifice for Zeus. Ancient writers mentioned the site and how human sacrifice was also at play, and thanks to technology, we can now confirm that this is indeed the case, sadly. The upper part of the skull was missing and the body was laid on two lines of stone, so it wasn't accidental. There were even stones laid on their pelvis, so something was going on. We look at Greece, of course, as the birthplace of philosophy, democracy, and 100 meter hurdles, and you know, the 100 meter dash, all the Olympic stuff, that's great. But they also did some sacrificial shady sh in their off time when they weren't slamming some Merlot. Science has allowed us to take a look all over the world as well, not just Greece. Ancient Egyptians, Aztecs, sometimes after mind ball games, sometimes the losing team would just be sacrificed. Yeah, good game, good game, good game, good game. Are we getting sacrificed? No, okay, good. Good game, good game, good game. Everyone talks about how awful humans are now. No, we were, we were pretty bad always, even before we knew how to speak words or what the sun was or what the moon was. We're like, you know what? I don't know what any of this is, but all I do know is that we gotta kill each other. Number six, whale cancer. The big C, oddly enough, doesn't affect big fish. What do you know? Well, we do know that the risk of cancer increases as you age, but the amount of cells that you have surely has something to do with it, right? So large animals like whales, obviously they have a few more cells laying around. They're a bit husky, they're a bit bigger. You would think that the odds of whales getting cancer would increase, but the reality of it is that whales and dolphins are way less susceptible to cancer than us humans. We still have no idea why. Maybe it's because whales sing a lot. I don't know, maybe if we sing to each other instead of talking and killing, we can maybe be cancer. I don't know, worth a shot. Let's just start singing like whales. That's how we'll communicate from now on. We'll just go, mm, and then someone else will be like, 
Good, thank you. Number five, MK Ultra. This one always gives me the chills. Many of you have probably heard of this at some point, but if not, well, buckle up. MK Ultra was a secret CIA project that lasted from 1953 to 1973, where they ran hundreds of experiments to US citizens, citizens without them knowing, and they gave them LSD, narcotics, anything in attempts to crack mind control, or as they called it, information gathering. It's like when Apple's like, yeah, we're just gonna gather some info real quick. When you talk to Facebook, we're just gonna gather some information. The spy, definitely, it's bad shit. In the 50s and 60s, around the Cold War, the United States believed that the Soviets, Chinese, and or the North Korean agents were using mind control. I mean, sure, how else could you explain brainwashed prisoners of war in Korea, right? That's gotta be the only explanation as to why they're acting that way. Nothing else to do with it. The program had subjects take LSD, hallucinogens, they had electric shock therapy at one point, horrible stuff and all, and it was being done in universities, hospitals, and prisons. The happenings of this project weren't fully known to the public until years after it ended, but the agency destroyed most MK documents back in 1973 when it ended. So we think we know, in reality, we probably know nothing, Jon Snow. Number four, skin problems. This is a specific case that I had to share. A Russian lady found a small lump below her eye, her left eye to be specific, and at first she didn't think much of it, but eventually this lump was gone, which is a good sign, but then a new lump had appeared later on, this time it was on her lip. Odd. So when she went to go see a doctor about this lip problem, which is new and the eye problem's now gone, they removed a Dirofilaria repens, which is a thin worm crawls around in the face. Hence why the bump was disappearing and then reappearing later on, it was moving around. I just got goosebumps talking about that. Now normally this type of worm only affects animals, dogs, cats, foxes, anything like that. They spread through mosquito bites as well. So next time you're in the woods smacking your arms, I dare you to not think of this. Good game. Number three, particle accelerator. This list is full of unsettling things. I mean, I hope, I mean, I think they're pretty batch insane, but this next one actually concerns me about our future. I don't mess with science. The ad home volcano trick where you like put in the the vinegar and it goes poof, I don't do that. That's even scary for me. What if one experiment could hypothetically swallow our known universe? Would we do it? Sure, sounds fun, why not? What have we got to lose at this point? Sir Martin Rees, Britain's royal astronomer, shines some light on a dark possibility in his book titled On the Future. The particle accelerator is this massive machine that does exactly that. It smashes these charged particles together at a high speed, all in the name of science. We're trying to further understand condensed matter physics, and while it sure sounds impressive, what if it goes south? What would happen? Well, it could destroy the world, apparently. These particles smashing together could create this strange matter that shrinks Earth down to 300 feet in diameter. Or it creates a black hole, one of the two. A black hole would just suck away all of our existence, or we'd be little tiny people. Thanks, Martin. Now I won't be able to sleep because I'm thinking of particle colliders and Freddy Krueger. Both are equally as haunting. Number two, no more insects. This one, I wish I didn't know. Ignorance is bliss, folks. But we're kind of doomed. No easy way to say it. And so is the bug spray industry, apparently. The world is losing insects, which if you're a little kid or if you're me, sounds like a good thing at first. I don't like bugs, any bugs. But when scientists tell us that the world has 70% less bugs than it did back in just the 80s, well, that's pretty concerning. Unsettling things scientists don't want us to see. I mean, this one they probably don't mind us taking a peek into. But we don't talk about this nearly enough. These buggy dudes are vital for our crops. The movie Interstellar, for example, is about our future and future humans running out of crops. So we shouldn't be listening to Christopher Nolan this entire time. I knew it. Go watch Dark Knight, there's probably some clues in there somewhere. We're too focused on robots gaining the ability to do parkour that we're forgetting the sad science as well. And finally, coming in at number one, mad cow disease. While we've got our hands full of this COVID madness, let me just add another one there to top you up. I stumbled across this Reddit thread here. It was titled, Scientists of Reddit, what are some scary scientific discoveries that most of the public is unaware of? Yeah, I read through a bunch of them, pretty scary, but I found this gem and had to finish the list off. One reply got lots of feedback, tons of support as well, and there's a great deal of people who just may be carrying around mad cow disease. But we won't know for another decade, give or take. So, sit tight. Stay tuned, I guess. Mad cow disease from the 80s and 90s was due to cows being fed the remains of other animals. Pretty horrible stuff. People then ate their beef and consumed prions, a protein that can destroy the human brain, and it's thought that many people still might carry prions but won't know until they start experiencing the symptoms, which could be 10 to 50 years after consuming said contaminated meat. It has a really long incubation period and you can also contract the prions from blood transfusions, which is the reason why so many UK citizens from that time period still aren't allowed to donate blood. Fun fact, this is a very real thing. And to answer your question, no, there is no cure and it can kill you in just a few months. How's that for unsettling? Guys, I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Those are the top 10 unsettling things that scientists don't want you to see. Um, spoiler alert, there's a lot more. So if a part two is in your deepest desires, comment down below and I shall reappear and give you some more haunting facts. Have a good weekend, peace.